S. Rajendran from Madras Medical College and Dr. R. Kannan from Prime. We welcome you, sirs, on stage. Now, I would like to call Dr. Tinki and Mahesh from Sri Ramachandra Medical College. Good evening to all. I am presenting a case of mass abdomen. Patient name, Mr. Purushottaman, 55-year-old gentleman, political worker by occupation. Came with complaint of uh, abdominal pain for the past one week. History of present illness, patient was apparently normal one week back. Then he developed abdominal pain in the upper abdomen, which was insidious in onset, one week duration, dull aching, intermittent type, non-radiating, non-related to food intake, with no aggravating or relieving factors. No history of abdominal distension, no history of vomiting, no history of hematemesis or melina, no history of fever, no history of loss of weight or loss of appetite, no history of altered bowel habits, no history of burning micturition or hematuria, no other swellings elsewhere in the body. Past medical history, history of similar illness present in the past for which he didn't seek any medical intervention, not a diabetic or hypertensive. Past surgical history, no history of surgeries done in the past. Personal history, married, has three children, consumes non-vegetarian diet, not a smoker or alcoholic. Family history, no history of malignancy in the family. Moving on to general examination. General examination, the BMI of the patient is 23 with an ECOG score of 0. Temperature afebrile, pulse rate is 84 per minute and BP is 120 by 70 millimeter of mercury. No pallor, ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy or edema. Abdominal examination, inspection, abdomen is flat, umbilicus is normal and inverted, all quadrants move well with respiration. There is a fullness, fullness noted in the left lumbar region. There is no scars, sinuses, pulsations or any dilated veins. Hernial orifices and scrotum appears normal, bilateral uh, renal angle free. Um, palpation, abdomen is soft. There is no focal areas of tenderness. A mass of size 10 into 7 centimeter is palpable in the left lumbar region uh, and also in the umbilical region. The superior extent is around uh, 4 centimeter from the mid uh, uh, from the left coastal margin uh, uh, from the in the mid axillary line. Inferior margin is around 10, centim 10 centimeters from the inguinal ligament. Medially the mass uh, encroaches the midline and laterally it extends up to the anterior axillary fold. Borders are well defined. Surface is irregular. Consistency variable. It is a no, non-mobile. There is no intrinsic mobility and it does not move with respiration. The plane of the swelling is intra-abdominal retroperitoneal. On putting the patient in left lateral position, the mass falls for, does not fall forward. Uh, the mass is bimanually palpable and it is non bellotable There is no other mass palpable. There is no hepatosplenomegaly, hernial orifice and scrotum normal, no renal angle tenderness and left supraclavicular uh, fossa is free. Percussion, over the mass it is dull. Uh, upper border of the liver is at the level of fifth intercostal space. Liver span is 12 cm and there is no shifting dullness. Auscultation, no brewy hurt, normal bowel sounds hurt. Parectal examination, no mass palpable per rectum, uh, stool stained glove. Uh, other systems, respiratory system, normal vesicular breath sounds, the CVS S1, S2 plus, CNS, no focal neurological deficit, no spine tenderness. Uh, in the history, did you ask about fever? Ah, yes, yes, Why do you have to ask for fever? In a patient with a mass in the left, whatever, lumbar region. Lymphoma, suspecting lymphoma. No, no, I want you to t speak into the mic. You are not audible. Lim to rule out lymphoma. To rule fever, out? Fever, loss of weight. Loss of what is it? Lymphoma. 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 Okay, next. It's only lymphoma. Anything else? What are the things that you should, why, you should ask? Why should you ask for fever, the importance of fever? with someone with a left lumbar swelling? Any abscess? Which so abscess where? From where the abscess could have come? Soya abscess. Pardon? Soya abscess. Soya abscess. Uh, lumbar region. Lumbar. Renal abscess. Renal abscess. Renal. <laughs> because you said the renal angles are free. No. No, my anyway, just giving in. See, so many things should run through your mind. Huh? Suppose some with a swelling like that. 
uh, that is there. It can be a pericolic abscess. It can be something to do with the spleen. A splenic enlargement and a splenic abscess could have been there. Or any collection, retroperitoneally, you could have. Or it may be something to do with an infected pseudocyst that is there. So many things. Which part of pancreas is uh, retroperitoneal? Body and body and head. Body and tail. Uh, only the tail, uh, except the, the tail. Except the tail. tail I wanted you to answer that. Uh, the tail of the pancreas is intraperitoneal. The rest is uh, retroperitoneal. Retro okay. In your description, you should be very careful in how the lady who is uh, presenting, my dear. Uh, so you you have to say that it is a mid clavicular line. You said it is an uh, axillary, mid-axillary line, you said. Everything which you say uh, must be very, because we are to understand how many centimeters from the costal margin. Mm. So in the mid-clavicular line, okay. Mm. So, and also you have committed yourself that there is no hepatosplenomegaly. See, suppose somebody is having a differential diagnosis of a large uh, toast to spleen that is there. How can you escape? Uh, there's no way, suppose you, you have not said where any notch is palpable or not, how is the anterior border, uh, you, you have not said anything about that. Uh -huh. So you don't commit yourself even beforehand that it's a, you can say that liver is not enlarged but uh, play, plays uh, subtly about the spleen until you have come to a diagnosis. Uh? And you can say that you are able to, uh, movement with respiration, it does not move with respiration. And you said it is bimanually palpable. It is not bellotable. What do you exactly mean by bellotability? If it is a renal swelling, ma'am, it was uh, generally bellotable. Uh, mm. But then uh, if it is a lumbar swelling, generally it can be bimanually palpable. Can still a large renal mass be not bellotable? Yes. If it is a very large one, absolutely there is no space for it to move and it has got extra renally, it has gone uh, extra what you call extra renal involvement, you know, all the surrounding tissues are involved and there is very little space, it cannot float. Uh, by gently tapping it posteriorly, it just comes laterally. Anything that you can hold on between your hands and then palpate is this one. And uh, the other thing, if it is a renal mass, uh, the pyrexia of unknown origin, you know, uh, one of the uh, renal tumors, uh, they will present with pyrexia uh, of unknown origin. If somebody has got a PUO, the surgical cause uh, is a renal tumor. Uh, that should be there. Okay. So, with these thoughts, uh, what, uh, any questions? Sir? Anything? Uh, what is your diagnosis? Ma'am, it's a retroperitoneal mass, uh, so probably uh, differential diagnosis of uh, sarcoma, retroperitoneal sarcoma. You, you, are, you are come to a diagnosis of retroperitoneal sarcoma. Oh. It's a retroperitoneal sarcoma, that is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. What are your points to say that it is a retroperitoneal sarcoma? How do these sarcomas present? The retroperitoneal. That means you should have asked some more questions, you know. Uh, what are the questions that you should have asked? Uh, you have not told us about uh, the, 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 where the ability, his gait, how it is there, any radiating pain down his limb, and also the attitude of the limb, you know, when he's lying down. Is there any uh, deformity, fix it? All these things, you know, you're thinking about a retroperitoneal tumor, all the more you, you should have asked all these, and also examine uh, with these things. Any thoughts? Uh, Thing is, uh, RCC most often is a diagnosis for pyrexia of unknown origin. Many doctors have not had a diagnosed, diagnosed late. So RCC can present as uh, fever. Uh, one thing, uh, you are presenting all the time as if it is the renal mass. That is what is the impression which we get once you complete the presentation. Because all the intra-abdominal findings and symptoms you have asked, but you have not asked anything pertaining to the retroperitoneum. So, which is nothing, nothing to suggest when you make a diagnosis and give provisionally retroperitoneal mass, you should have some si symptoms for retroperitoneal. Otherwise, what are the symptomatology for retroperitoneal mass? How do they present? See, to, to know how do you suspect retroperitoneal mass be before examination? What are the things you'll ask? Generally, retroperitoneal mass are asymptomatic in presentation. 
uh, but then uh, they uh, if it is large enough then they can present with compression sy symptoms sir like uh, patient uh, if it is com very large enough compressing the ivc patient can have pedal edema so yeah, you yourself are saying that it, it could have compressed on the veins huh? um, on the right side of course the ivc here the iliac veins could have compressed if they be the lower extent we need to know so when it is compressing on the veins what should you observe in the legs should look for any varicose veins mm. should be there any yeah. varicose seal could have been there huh? and mm. what kind of varicose veins you get the secondary varicose mm. veins huh? primary and secondary okay. varicose veins what is the difference between these two the primary varicose veins you once you raise the limb huh, the veins will get just emptied in no time if it is because of an obstruction that is there, especially with a large tumor like that, and the limb will be even edematous, you can have a brawny edema, and also multiple unnamed veins will be dilated. Even if you raise the limb, it's not going to empty so soon, okay? So these are the things that uh, you, you should know. Uh, and uh, how, can, can you tell me approximately what will be the size of a tumor uh, with which a patient with a retroperitoneal tumor presents to you? Uh, 15 centimeter. So always 20 centimeters and above is the time which they come, you know. They present so late, uh, approximately 20. They are not aware of it. So how do they get it? They can either come with a presentation like Sir was telling, you know. It can be presenting on the viscera. It can be presenting on the venous system. It can be a vague pain. It can be radiating pain down the legs and the limbs or they can come with a metastatic disease. Can you name some uh, primary which can produce a metastasis in the retroperitoneum? Tuber. See, the examiners can catch you all the time, you know. It is uh, the other way around, they can ask you. So you're used to getting, you know, retroperitoneal tumor with a metastasis, but they can catch you on the wrong foot. It's the liposarcomas, you know, and the bad lipomyxoid liposarcomas, they can present with a metastatic disease in the retroperitoneum. So that you, you also should know that. Okay. Now, now that you're thinking, uh, any differential diagnosis you want to give? Some examiner says it could be a renal mass. What are your points to say that it's not a renal mass? Uh, the renal angle, there's no uh, renal angle fullness, uh, then the uh, mass is non-balotable. Okay, that's the only thing, no hematuria. No hematuria, things, no uh, symptoms of... No, uh, why does somebody, what are the other uh, paraneoplastic problems in an RCC? Hypercalcemia. Uh, uh, patient can have hypercalcemia Okay. Pa because of parathyroid -like hormone secretion. Mm -hmm. Then they can have, because of ACTH secretion, uh, they, uh, they can have hyperaldosteronism. Okay. Stoffer syndrome also you can get. Uh, polycythe uh, poly, uh, what do you call it, the polycythemia and anemia. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the cause for this uh, polycythemia? Uh, erythropoiesis, uh, uh, eth that happens in the kidney, so es erythropoietin. Uh, erythropoietin. Yeah. Any other factor that is responsible for this polycythemia? Lactoferrin. Lactoferrin is another thing that is produced that can also cause polycythemia. It can be anemia or it can be polycythemia. Okay. Now, uh, anything, sir? Why do you want to say it's a retroperitoneal sarcoma? Whether it can be a retroperitoneal tumor? And why, why do you want to comment on uh, whether it's malignant or benign? What are the points in favor of being a malignant tumor? That is what I want to say. No, from your history, from your inspection, and from your palpation, give us the relevant points that is in favor of a retroperitoneal sarcoma. Uh, uh, pa uh, patient came with complaints of abdominal pain, sir, on and off, but increased in intensity since the last uh, one week. Then uh, on examination, uh, inspection, there was a lumbar fullness, and on palpation, uh, there was a mass of seven in, uh, 10 into 7 centimeter left lumbar region which does not move with respiration and there is no intrinsic mobility and it was not crossing the midline also. So. You're going over and over again same thing. My very simple question, I think you had that in your point. You said the pain has been more severe recently. 
some dragging pain it's become more severely in the last one week suggesting that's a rapid growth in a tumor okay that is one in terms of an you know like your his history per se in the inspection of course you said there's fullness and madam said it's a mid clavicular line in that also again you know like always in your inspection have it with a fixed point your subcostal margin here is your fixed point so if you're going to talk about it talk about it how many centimeter from the you know like subcostal margin it is there hmm. with regards to all your lines like madam said mid clavicular line rather than the mid axillary line okay and then the next thing is basically you know where it is extending whether there's a fullness in the lumbar region hmm. okay which she's noticed recently or something and last but not the least is you know like with regards to you know pressure symptoms of late if she develops a varicose vein of late if she develops an radiating pain then you think in terms of rapid increase in size causing this kind of pressure symptoms either on the viscera or on the spine or you know like on the muscles like when you notice all your movements and you know like the position of the limb when the patient is lying down so all that you didn't say in your inspection okay well, what do you think is the exact location of the in the poor tumor the okay. retroperitoneum you want to say what is the ex extent how far it extends the extent in the retroperitoneal of... compartment oh. you have compartments right yes, the central compartment that you want to fail you want to the retroperitoneal whole abdomen is a tumor Posteri or it's uh, posterior to the peritoneum posterior peritoneum no, you, the extent the extent what's the likely extent of the tumor Tum what are the boundaries of the retro peritoneum uh, anteriorly is the posterior peritoneum Pos uh, superiorly it's the diaphragm uh, inferiorly is the uh, pelvic uh, extension and uh, posteriorly it is the muscle paraspinal muscles and Differential diagnosis. Penal cell carcinoma. Okay. Can it be some incident. large tumor arising from the adrenal? Yes. What tumor? Your blood pressure is normal, you know. F F what tumor you can get so large from an adrenal? If the BP is high, ma'am, or no? BP is normal. BP is normal. Your blood pressure is normal, but still could it incidental omas. Exactly. Huh? The incidental omas attain very large size, you know. And <laughs> okay, how will you, I think we're running short of, what, 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 how will you proceed further? Uh, Ma'am, uh, first we'll do uh, all basic investigations like hemoglobin, TC, DC. Remember, uh, extremity examination, uh, completely, the skeletal system, uh, very important, uh, you should say that. So, go ahead, rush through the investigations. Hemoglo he uh, investigations, uh? Yeah. Go on, go on. Hemoglobin, TC, DC, uh, then... Uh, uh, routine blood examinations. Routine uh? blood okay. investigations and uh, then uh, we'll do an uh, ultrasound abdomen, ma'am, uh, to see the uh, origin of, site of, uh, origin of the tumor and then uh, involvement of other uh, surrounding structures, uh, splenic vein involvement, renal vessel involvement. What imaging you want to do? Uh, C, C, T, whole abdomen, ma'am. You want to do contrast enhanced CT. Yes. In a CECT, what information you want to get? Uh, 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 extend of the lesion, compression. First of all, where the tumor is, uh, location of the tumor, from origin, where exactly it is coming, because mm. we do not know where it is coming. Okay, next. Uh, then you want to know about the renal system, kidney. Mm. Especially you want to see how is the function of this kidney? Is first of all the kidney present or not? Hmm. Or it is an agenesis of the kidney or the opposite side, how it is there? Because some of the large retroperitoneal tumors, when you are removing and when it is got spread, you may be removing the whole thing. Huh? About the intestine also. Huh? The intestine also. How exactly it is there? For all you know, you may be thinking it is a um, uh, retroperitoneal tumor. Who knows it may be a large? Gastrointestinal stromal yes. tumor that is coming. There, the gastroenterologist is in any number of cases, uh, Professor Rajendran would have removed. So, what we are thinking as a retroperitoneal would have been a gist also. So, every information you should get. Okay? 
and then you proceed to complete the case because the time is over they say uh, uh, you just proceed to say what are the investigation she told about cct next what, what else do? next what you followed by cct we will do a ct guided biopsy of the lesion and then uh, then you will send that specimen madam to a pathology what all you will send the pathology tumor ma tumor markers tumor mark sir core biopsy she will do true cat ct guided core needle guided biopsy image biopsy she wants to do sir it was a sarcoma resectable you assess you assess that whether it is a resectable or not yes sir then you decide by regarding biopsy hmm. straight away don't do biopsy because it may give a tract seedling spillage so first assess the tumor stage the tumor complete every work up then go for a then decide whether patient is resectable non resectable uh, it may be doubtful lesion also those conditions only you may have do a biopsy simply doing a biopsy is not advisable yes you proceed to proceed to finish so that let them have a yes, complete uh, yeah what do you want to do ct you have done ultrasound you have done you just tell complete uh, then uh, then we'll do a biopsy sir depending upon the biopsy uh, we'll uh, plan on the further management your biopsy comes as liposarcoma then we'll plan for an uh, then first we'll do a metastatic workup uh, we'll do a chest x ray or uh, if not required an hr ct then uh, uh, then that if a patient is symptomatic regarding bone or something then uh, then followed by which end block resection has to be done <laughs> okay then okay it's suppose if it is not metastatic what will you do what is the treatment for soft tissue sarcoma sir, liposarcoma and mfh are the most common tumors what will you do surgical removal surgical primary surgical end block resection okay are they are they radio responsive there are uh, radio responsive to uh, to uh, tumors are there <laughs> radio responsive chemotherapy Yes, sir. Chemosensitive tumors are also there. Uh, liposarcoma, and specifically, is it radiosensitive? Liposarcoma is chemosensitive tumor, sir. Okay, we'll close, madam. The time run. Last question: What is the role for PET CT here? Uh, PET CT can uh, find. If it is a liposarcoma, uh, you have a heterogeneous component, you know. So you have some uh, active foci and some that does not uh, see on a PET. so it helps us to diagnose hmm? so you can image guided biopsy huh? that's the only role for pet in the sarcomas before you go doctor i think the only thing is ultrasound does not delineate in you know, like where the extent of the tumor or not in retroperitoneum don't ever go say in the exam because to look at the retroperitoneum by ultrasound with so much of gas shadows itself is very difficult mm -hmm. your extent is decided only by your ct scan okay not with your ultrasound. ultrasound don't ever use the word you will see the extent of the tumor with ultrasound in a retroperitoneal tumor okay yes. thank you thank you thank you sir.